Hello, it's Hank. And I have a plan. I'm going to suspend this water balloon above my head. It's a little, got a little rigging in here so I can run wires and stuff, but it's gonna have this in it. Hopefully, well, I'll get a real step stool. I won't stand on the rolly chair. I'm 44, I'm making better decisions now. A little confetti falling down. Don't drop the balloon, Hank. All right, that is now directly above my head. There it is. And if it were to pop, I would, a, a bunch of water would fall on my head. And all of this, so you know, is so that you'll keep watching the video. That's the only thing that's going on right now. Because that's going to be important. And now I'm going to take this high-powered green laser, shine it right at the water balloon. And then we're going to tape that so that it's always on. And now the laser is pointed at the balloon, which is above my head. And at any moment, it could pop. Adjusting the whole situation so that I'm in the middle while I'm underneath the balloon, which we have now done. So you definitely know that I'm one of the hosts of SciShow. You might know that I'm also the founder of SciShow. You might not know that I am one of SciShow's biggest fans. I love what we do here so much. I am nervous. And however big of a fan you are, I think I can be a bigger fan because I see how this all works. I see how an episode idea gets scrutinized and tested to make sure that we're not just trying to get clicks, but also trying to tell true stories about the world that help people understand how we build knowledge. I know that fact checks catch little things that probably wouldn't even ever get noticed if we did release them, but we make sure that they don't get released anyway. I know the writers and I know their standards. I pitch them episodes that they refuse. I try to get them to use titles that they rightly identify as too clickbait. When I walk into the SciShow studio to record videos, I am consistently met not just with accuracy, but with mind-blowing concepts and frames that help me understand the world better. That team makes me look good, they make me sound good, and when it hits production and that team makes sure the videos stay captivating and they make graphics to help communicate complicated ideas when words aren't enough. I see them in our Slack debating titles and thumbnails to try and figure out the best way to package everything up and make sure it reaches the biggest number of people possible. So so that we can have the most impact possible. Is it not gonna happen? I Maybe all the, the water inside is actually absorbing some of that heat. Well, that actually makes sense. Hmm. Actually, right now, if you could do me a favor and just like hit back a couple of times, like go back 15 seconds, and then this will be the spike in the video where everybody's gonna scroll to. It'll have like the spike in the viewership eventually, and everybody's gonna scroll to that moment thinking that that's when the I get hit by the water balloon, and but no, we got you. Other things I love about how SciShow works, when we get critiques questioning what we put in videos, I watch their process as they take those critiques seriously and determine whether and how to respond. I believe the team at SciShow is building something very special, and I don't think they're done. Another thing I know, because I help run SciShow, is that the budget is always crunched. They're never able to do as much as they would like to do. And I also know that without support, from our audience, the scope of our work would be much smaller. SciShow is not inevitable. We started this thing not knowing whether it would work. And so far it has worked, but nothing exists forever. And SciShow only exists because a tiny portion, something like 0.02% of people who watch also kick a bit our way. And I'm happy to be one of the people who is able to do that. And if you are one of those people as well, thank you so much on behalf of the team and also on behalf of all the people who benefit from watching SciShow videos, you are doing them a solid. One thing we are trying right now, but only between when this video goes up and when we take it down, are the SciShow postcards. So there are four of these postcards. Each one is signed by me and all the rest of the hosts of SciShow, and also each one has a link to a different video discussing one of my four favorite frog facts, filmed right here in my studio. You do not know which one you're gonna get unless you get all four, and then you get all four frog facts. It's $25 for one postcard, it's $60 for all four. Obviously the postcards do not cost that amount of money, but they have exclusive content, and also all that money, of course, is going to support SciShow. I would not be asking if we did not need this. We cannot do it without you, and we can do more with you. I know the world thinks that the most accurate and authentic stuff these days is made by just one person alone, but I promise you teams do a better job. And the SciShow team does an amazing job. If you're able, buy a postcard. If you're more able, buy all four. If you want to give monthly, our Patreon is linked in the description. The balloon has not popped. And I did have a contingency plan, which is an X-Acto knife on the end of a tripod leg. So we're just gonna do that instead, I guess. But only if you promise to consider what I've told you and to consider getting a SciShow postcard or becoming a patron. Links to both of those things are in the description. My green powered laser just isn't powerful enough. So we're gonna have to go through a more traditional Method of popping. Oh, doing it myself is almost worse. Oh! Thank you, everybody. That was very lap-focused, actually. Thanks to everybody on the SciShow team. Thanks to everybody who's ever supported us in any way. Thank you if you're just considering it. And, and thank you if you're not able to and you just love what we do and you're watching. Again, the links are in the description. I'm so wet. Watch out for the X-Acto knife on the tripod, Hank. Let's put that away. Ooh, there's a wet spot on my chair. I should have thought about that. That's gonna be annoying.